This is Sebastian Mendel Martinez for MMA News here with Damir the Bosnian bomber Hadjovic, who faces Renato Moicano at UFC in, at fight night in Brazil. So Damir, you've got a big fight ahead of you, probably the biggest name in the UFC so far that you faced when you take account you know, rankings and things like that. Uh, what was your reaction when this name was delivered to you? Because I know that you, you, know, you don't say no to a f any fight, but this has got to be like a dream scenario for you, getting such a big name. Yeah, definitely. I woke up and I got a text from a manager with the fight, the date and the location. I was like, is that the guy who I think it is? I'm like, doesn't he fight in featherweight? I know he's like the seven on rankings, like the seven best featherweight in the world. Like, I have to check it on Sherdog, but it was him. He's moving up. I'm like, hell yeah, I'm going to welcome him. Yeah, it was, wow, I was so happy. I love these challenges. This is what makes me get early up you know, and early in bed. So, yeah, amazing opportunity for me. Absolutely, and I guess a very welcome one too, because your last fight didn't really go as planned. You uh, you faced Christos Giagos in Stockholm, and uh, it wasn't really apparent going into a fight, but then afterwards it was revealed that, you know, you actually had a knee injury heading into that fight. Uh, how did that all come about? And, you know, what was your thought process? Did any part of you, you know, want to, you know, cancel a fight, step out? Yes, I was uh, injured. I had a torn menisc, completely torn. I before the fight, I felt it. I never got it checked. I didn't want to know it. You know, I, it's better not to know it. And I didn't want to cancel the fight because UFC. I think they'd be good to me. Every time I asked, can I fight in Prague? They let me. They got, got me a fight. Can I fight in Sweden? You know, I got a fight. So it's like it happened. Maybe I felt my leg like getting weird and hurt, hurting like three weeks before the fight. So I'm like. I'm just gonna go in and check it to see what happens, you know. And uh, yeah, in the fight, it definitely made a difference for my movement. But you know, it is what it is. It was better than me that day. You know, he couldn't finish me or nothing. I take that. So I take some positive things from the fight. It is what it is. That's the past. Doesn't matter. Now I'm ready, more ready than ever, more hungry than ever. Everything is good. The weight is good, man. So good. You know, everything happens for a reason. So. Well, speaking of hunger. Uh, one very positive development for you is that you became a father uh, not too long ago. You welcomed a beautiful baby girl into the world. And I know that Donald Cerrone has talked about uh, that when, he, when his son was born, that sort of changed things for him. That's just like he, he got a different sort of focus to fighting. Have you experienced anything similar when it comes to MMA and to the UFC or are things the same as before you were, became a dad? Yeah, definitely. Because I, I, I became dad to my little girl three weeks before my fight, about two, three weeks. So I remember when I was in Stockholm, I was like thinking all the time on her. I just want to go home to her. And now I spend lots of time with her. Now it's different. Now I can, you know, uh, I. it's like, you don't realize you're dead. You're still, you know, soaking it in. Like, wow, I'm a, do I really have a daughter? You know, do I really have a kid? Wow, is, is she mine? And now, you know, it all settled down. You know, it's soaked in now. I'm like ready to to fight and make her proud of me. I know when she gets older, she'll be proud of daddy. Yeah. Oh, my dad fought in UFC, you know. I, you know, I know she was so. And the thing is when you get kids, many other things don't matter no more. Before I had, oh, I thought about uh, what of this, what of that, what of these people say, I don't care. All I think about my family now, I have a girl at home. Every day I think about her, you know, I have to go home to her. That's what makes me happy. And yes, definitely the change is something in a man. You get your priorities straight. So I have other priorities now, you know, fighting and, fa you know, of course, family first and my job. But the last two months, I prioritized my job first. That you have to do that in fighting. Otherwise, you could get, you could, co you know, you can get injured or, or have a bad fight. So you have to be egoistic, but I have a good wife at home. You know, I can do what I do every day. So, and after the fight, uh, I always give them back. So, and I guess that's very good for you to have such an understanding family because you've been in hard preparations now. I mean, you've always been in good shape, but you just look more shredded than ever. Do you feel a physical change heading into this fight compared to your last fights? Yeah, definitely. Uh, because this time I really took it so much serious than before. I always take it serious, but when I say that, I mean also my diet. Before I like, my diet is always like two weeks before, and then I start eating like uh, for my fight. Now I ate like four, five weeks before my fight. So already now I'm very low, 
on my way. I'm, I'm not like hungry. I'm not going starvation. You no, know? I, I've, uh, I've did this for five weeks, so I'm used to it now. So in the evening, it's it's good when I eat a small meal. So I feel good. I feel sharp. I feel strong. Everything is on point. So what happens happens that I cannot control. But these things right now, the weight, the shape, I took control over that much uh, more strictly this time than ever before. And I guess that'll be that'll come in handy because you're going to enemy territory, uh, Brazil, where a lot of people talk about the atmosphere being truly different than other places. But you've already experienced there. You, you know, you've been there, done that. You've already had the ooh, vam, re, hey, you know, the whole arena against you. Does that feel good for you? But you sort of you got that first Brazil fight out of the way. Like you're more experienced now. You know what to expect. Yes, definitely. There's many factors in play there because the first fight I had in Brazil, it was in like by the equator. It was like much more. The air was moist, and it was in and it was rainy season. It is probably also now. I don't know, but it was warm, and I had a 26-hour flight. Now I only have 14-hour flight, and it's in another. It's uh, lower in the you know region, and it's better weather, and. Um, it's uh, the capital, you know, it's better. So, but yes, I already tried that and uh, it wasn't so bad because I had a hard cut in Brazil. Mm -hmm. So uh, it definitely made something, but the fans and, and all that, it's only for the weigh-ins and when you go in, but when you fight, it doesn't matter. You don't even hear them. Of course, you can hear when something happens like, <sighs> mm -hmm. oh, are they, what, what happened? Like, <laughs> but now, nah, you know, it's always the same. A fight is a fight. I know I just have to be strong for those 17 minutes. I have to be strong for those 17 minutes. That's what I come. F that's what I come for. I will be strong for 17 minutes. And well, I mean, touching on that, he's like you said, he's moving up from featherweight. You're a sizable lightweight. How much do you expect sort of a weight class change to uh, to have an effect on the fight? I don't know. I heard he cuts a lot of weight, so maybe he won't he won't cut so much weight now. But who knows? Maybe because he's going up in weight class weight class then he's like uh then i now i can relax i can eat more you know what i mean yeah. then he's maybe heavier than he's used to be before and i don't know how he's used to moving in a, in a bigger class because it is different when you change weight class your conditioning numbers are not so good because the smaller you are the more oxygen intake you can have in your body you know mm -hmm. so yeah, we'll see. But I don't think about it. It's a fight, you know. I don't go and think about oh, how does he eat, how does he train. I don't care. I just think about his dangerous weapons and what I have to do to hit him, try to finish him if I can. But mostly I just want to win. Well, I mean, let's talk about that. What do you feel are his most dangerous weapons? I mean, he's had some tough fights in the UFC, but against elite competition. What are his best weapons and what are your best ways of overcoming them? Yeah, he's he's a well-rounded guy, honestly. He's black belt jiu-jitsu, he has like six, seven submissions, and then the rest is decisions. So he's a very technical, good fighter. He's good on distance. He's very technical, so uh, I have to, he's sneaky, he fights backwards, forwards. So um, yeah, you know, he's a very dangerous guy. It's not for fun, he, he was the seven best well, uh, yeah. featherweight. No matter if he lost the last two fights, doesn't matter. I don't think about that. So, but let's see how, how he handles the pressure. He's going to fight on home soil and the audience is with him. So in his mind, he also has to win. So does he like the pressure or is it too much for him? What would you say is your overall message to Moikon? Because, you know, you've been a UFC lightweight since the start of your career. I think most people would agree that it's the most talent stacked division in the UFC and by extension in MMA in general as well. Uh, he's moving up, he's facing you, you're going to his home field, but it's still a division that you're more comfortable at. What's your message to Moicano? Hey brother, welcome. Welcome to our division. You see, it's different. It's not those uh, small guys you fought. Now it's uh, equal size. Yeah. So because he looks uh, big because he fought all these featherweights, he cuts a lot. But you know, let's have a good fight, brother. Let's do it. One for the fans. I, I just hope that uh, it will be like some kind of fight of the night or something. That's what I like when I watch my fights, you know, um, when I see, oh man, I'm fighting, oh, there's losing, oh, did I do that? You know, I, you know, I'm proud of myself, uh, how far I come. So I hope it's going to be a good fight and I'm coming to win 100%. So brother, I see you there.
There you have it. So all the makings of a fantastic fight. I think stylistically, yeah, it's fireworks. You cannot miss it. Damir Hajovic versus Renato Moicano, UFC Brasilia next Saturday. Always a pleasure. Good luck in the fight. Thank you, my friend.